Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me for Entity Empowered Troubleshooting and how entities make your job easier. I'm Abi Khanna and I'll be guiding you through today. So what will we cover? Um, we're gonna talk about what an entity is and define what an entity is inside of the observability space. We're gonna talk about how bad and boring your world is without entities. And finally, we're gonna talk about how correlating insights in an entity-driven observability world is critical to your troubleshooting needs. So I decided to do the classic thing anyone does when they wanna learn about a new topic. And I decided to Google entity and see what would come up. And first and foremost, I got this kind of philosopher's digest of uh, the definition for what an entity is. Um, it's a thing with distinct and independent existence, not really the physical kind of definition I was looking for. So I decided let's look at the quick hint that Google gives you on the side. And uh, unfortunately it was no better. It said basically a entity is something kind of an open-ended definition of what an entity is. So let's see, maybe if we scope this down to observability, we scope this down to our DevOps space, we can come up with kind of a better definition um, than this kind of abstract definition that entity provides. So the first thing we looked at here is a physical host, okay? So in AWS, we've got this physical host definition. Um, what does that look like as an entity? So in AWS, we have this panel, this uh, kind of interface that enables us to see these hosts and their properties. We get things like their ID, like their name, like the region, the type, um, certain associated metrics like CPU, mem, disk. And these all kind of bound this entity inside of AWS. This is what allows us to reason about and understand the behavior or the configuration for this given host. And we might even look at this in a virtual sense. So in Kubernetes, we've got these virtual concepts and objects like deployments and services, uh, namespaces, and they all too have their own uh, configuration, definitions, they act kind of like entities in the Kubernetes domain. In this case, in this deployment here on the right, we see that it has a bunch of these properties such as deployment name, how long it's been around, cluster, namespace, and certain associated metrics like CPU, mem, disk, number of pods, et cetera. This once again binds this entity together and allows us to understand the behavior that this entity will have. As we abstract this out, we can see that there's a few key properties of what an entity is for ops. Firstly, you've got physical objects and virtual objects, things like hosts versus things like Kubernetes deployments. And if it's physical, then these are the originators of the signals that you're actually monitoring. If they're the CPU, they describe the CPU of the actual workload running. If they're virtual, then they actually represent an abstract grouping of the actual physical elements themselves. When we think about a CPU for a deployment, it's really the aggregate or the um, you know, average CPU of the underlying pods themselves. And once again, different domains have a different sense of what objects will be at play. For Kubernetes, you're gonna have things like deployments, namespaces, pods. For AWS, you might have physical things like hosts, RDS instances, Lambda functions, et cetera. Similarly, APM and infra monitoring will all have different objects that need to be described. And they all seem to have a set of properties that help bind together the current state and the current function of any of those entities. As promised earlier, let's talk about what a world would look like if we didn't have entities and how there would be no correlations that we could easily make. So I want you to imagine a world with no advanced tools, just a basic telemetry system with siloed, non-connected logs, metrics, and traces, and no concept of your infrastructure. Let's say you get an alert early in the morning, and now you need to react to it. There's some standard questions you would ask when you get this alert. You'd wanna know what signal is out of whack, what systems are affected, what systems might be downstream or upstream causing an impact, and is your infrastructure at fault? Once you have these questions answered or you start to dive into these questions, you might check into things like playbooks, dashboards, individual metric trends, you might go grab log lines from the violating components by a grep, by a tailing a log file using something like Sumo Logic. Um, you might potentially go grab trace information about interacting components, translating your system questions into these trace query details. At the end of the day, all of your questions are about the system and what are the system components doing? Yet, when you really dive into your kind of stitched together tool set, you're left with something that just gives you basic query management. You have the ability to query metrics, you have the ability to query logs, and you have the ability to query traces. But do you really have the ability to stitch it all together in a way that enables you to digest and ask those entity-related questions that you were naturally trying to ask? Instead, you're left with a Grafana-style dashboard 
just trying to put together the right data signals on the right dashboard, just make the correlations manually. Translations abound in traditional systems. You're constantly left translating from your system questions to your data stream questions. Always saying, how do I translate that question about is this host healthy to what is the CPU and memory of that actual host and how do I write it in the query language that this tool supports. Siloed engines means that your observability system is no better than those individual data streams it sees. You're left with query and storage engines and not really a true observability system. Three data streams, not one insight stream. And what you really needed was that one insight stream. So let's talk about what happens if you actually have an entity first world. Traditional systems are awkward. What if we had a system that actually understood our entities at its core? So you'd get an alert at 3 a.m., no different than the starting point we had before, but now you're able to ask much better questions about that alert. Firstly, if the alert already contains the entities that are in a violating state, it's already done the translation to the system components that are, in, that are impacted. I can now use those system components to drill down into the underlying questions I had earlier. Things like detailed pages about those entities, dashboards, playbooks, even the underlying raw data streams. So I'm not at a loss from anything I had before. Furthermore, anytime I see a spike anywhere in the product, because it has an entity mindset, I'm now able to use that entity as a pivot. I'm able to ask the question, what produced this spike? And how is this spike related to the other objects at play? Furthermore, if I need to change where that spike drives me, I'm able to use the entity as a pivot point to go drive into logs, metrics, or traces, or even the entity details, depending on where I feel my hypothesis is leading me. Once I have the entity, I've got seamless pivoting capabilities across these data streams, enabling me to spend more time asking questions, driving towards answers, and less time translating across the different paradigms. A common question we were asking before, is it an infrastructure problem or is it an application problem? Once we know the entity behind a data point, we're able to actually produce for you the pod itself or the entity itself, along with the infrastructure it sits on, all in one view. And thanks to KPIs and health indicators, and a quick glance, we can help you highlight where the problem might sit. And by allowing you to dive in and specifically hone in on the entity at play, you're able to use that entity as the starting point to dive deeper into a deeper investigation, whether that be into the entity details themselves or into the logs, metrics, or traces about that. Because you had this entity information, you were able to very quickly isolate out the components that might be at play. Because we knew how they're related to each other, we're able to show you the connected components rather than having you have to manually stitch these together by looking at the data streams themselves. Some of the other benefits you get by using entity-based correlations and entity-based systems is you get seamless integration across logs, metrics, and traces. From any entity, you can get to any data stream. And this gives you the flexibility of not having to spend time translating. Once you understand entity relationships, how they're contained within, how they're connected to, we can provide smoother recommendations about where the next step might be whether it's due to a downstream service, whether it's due to an infrastructure problem, all of these connections become much more visible when you have an entity-based model. And finally, to really understand root cause, you need to have a deep topology graph that actually models out the interactions between different components, enabling the system to actually understand how a spike in one given component or an unhealthiness in one com given component might yield unhealthiness downstream. Entity models also allow us to cluster alerts. So that way we're not spamming you because every single signal within an entity is firing. We're able to actually use the entity as a binding to limit out that alert scope. Once you have entities, you can drive towards a more complete system representation in your observability tools of choice. Connecting the dots becomes a simple byproduct of that representation. For us tools and vendors, we need to think about how we drive further representation. The closer we get to complete representation, the better we can do at actually correlating and providing insights rather than raw data. As we wrap up this talk, I wanna leave you with three key takeaways. Entities turbocharge your ability to monitor and troubleshoot because entities are system objects that describe the world as you see it. And without entities, you have no correlation capabilities. But with entities, we can provide deep correlations across these data streams. And because of these deep correlations, entities give you much higher levels of troubleshooting flexibility than you had before.
providing you navigational pathways through your system components that were not easily present before. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening to my talk.